If somebody were asking me why is it important to include a kind of a, a very serious, very rigorous discussion between music and art, I would say they're each reflections of this idea that creativity knows no limits. So for my residency at the Met Museum, I wanted to kind of look at a dialogue between tools and what is what you know what someone might make as a tool like an iPad app versus a painting you know like let's draw a paradox there when you talk about sampling when you talk about collage when you talk about people's record collections I wanted to look at the Met Museum as a kind of a huge archive a huge record collection and to kind of think about the ways that we could engage it and the ways that we could actually think of history itself because every record is a history how do we uh, you know kind of look at that as a as a provocation for creativity. So we're calling it reframing the museum because the museum, to me the most classic thing when you go into an old school museum is the frame of the painting. It's not about the experience of the museum as a social thing, but about the way that you move through the space. So a lot of museums are kind of mausoleums, they're like they're, they're dead spaces. You move through an exhibition, you, you might have gone to, with your mom to the Met or something. Um, and there's such a classic New York experience of the Met as that kind of social transition space. Like you move through, there's a kind of procession. Now with digital media, I wanted to try and think about looking at the Met from the viewpoint of the abstraction of the architecture, for example, and the way that conditions your experience, or the, the role of the paintings and the way that they're sequenced about history. There's gonna be five projects at the Met Museum. One is a remix and rescore of a very famous film from East Asia called Madame Freedom. Um, it's the first film made after the Korean Civil War, and I'm really interested in art and geopolitics, by the way. I think that what's fascinating with the film Madame Freedom is that it looks at when women began to have more power in a Korean context. I thought that, that would be a nice way to show the transformation of Asia under the impact of technology and other things. It's a, considered a classic of Asian cinema. The other projects, there's five total. Uh, one is called Of Water and Ice. I went to the Arctic Circle near the North Pole and did a whole project there. That project's gonna be a concert and again, a kind of an abstract installation at the Met. There's other projects between, one is with the Civil War, where I worked with the estate of, again, D.W. Griffith. He left his estate to Harvard and to MoMA, long story. But I remixed the film, so what we're gonna do is an update on that, looking at the Civil War in the context of red state, blue state. I'm very blue state. Um, and I'm very intrigued with how the history of, of racial politics has influenced elections and, of course, Obama versus the Republicans. And I'd rather remix the entire <laughs> context of how people think about the whole thing. The final one is going to be a kind of listening party where I remix the museum using Wi-Fi wi networks and iPads, Google Android tablets, stuff like that, so that everyone who comes to the museum with a smartphone or a tablet will be able to interact with the objects in the museum in a way that triggers music. It's kind of an ambitious take. We'll see what happens, because this is an experiment. It's, that's why we're calling it an artist residency rather than an installation or an exhibition. Residency implies living, being, exploring, checking it out. And I think that for the 21st century, this is something new. Nobody's done it before, so we'll see. A lot of it, it's gonna be about research, and a lot of it's gonna be about me hanging out at the Met. I mean, a lot of the articles that were saying DJ Spooky haunts the Met, which is kind of fun. You know, again, that's spooky, right? Uh, it reminds me of the ghost of Christmas past and, you know, Marley is the main character who comes back and the guy gets taken all the, you know, the future Christmas and the past Christmas and everything. Um, I kind of feel like that with the Met right now. It's like, uh, you know, just, it's very non-linear. I'll leave it at that. As we move further into the 21st century, uh, people are always talking about decline of resources, storms. It's a very, for lack of a better word, Malthusian kind of uh, situation where the population increase, weather instability, decline of our you know, superpower status or something. It's very existential. But people, if they can imagine something different, you'd be shocked at what they can do. You know, a century ago, we weren't flying. Now we're flying every day, everywhere, all the time. A century ago, we weren't on the moon. We'll see. You know, we have a, a robot on Mars now sending Twitter feed, you know, on high-resolution photographs, <laughs> and it has its own Twitter account. You know, I mean, there's a lot that we can say that can change if people can imagine something. Uh, climate change seems to be an inevitable and heavy process, but I bet you if we were to imagine and try and work on some of the issues, 
that I have faith in humanity and I think that we can really change and do a lot of stuff. These are very cynical times. Uh, so it's important to kind of keep that in mind that it's not permanent and if people can imagine something different, just the ability and the actual act of imagining something different, saying another world is possible, that alone is the beginning of a whole process. I mean, I could point out so many other examples. So I use my art projects to kind of look at not only a subtle nuance between how people think of history, but to say this is where sampling says all sorts of permutations are possible. Uh, what happens if I mix, you know, George Clinton, Parliament Funkadelic with horns from Duke Ellington with a beat from the Rolling Stones? You combine it up and you got, you know, Wu-Tang Clan. You know, who would have guessed? Um, so that, that kind of collage is what I celebrate. Yo, bada boom, bada bang. Hey, what's up? This is Paul Miller, a.k.a. DJ Spooky. You are watching Thinker.